Today we're going with the compact portable Elna Lotus. Uh, this little machine is very light, uh, well light for an older machine, put it that way, probably uh, a similar weight to a modern plastic type uh, machine of this era, but um, certainly for the day very light, very compact and a really cute little machine I think. Uh, just to give you a comparison as to the size. So as a comparison this is a uh, Elna TSP Air Electronic, uh, a bit more of a conventional sized machine but if we look at the uh, comparison with the, the little brother there or little sister, however you want to uh, put it, that um, gives you a bit of an idea of the size of this thing. I mean, it's it, it's pretty small, so uh, the little doors just fold down like that to reveal the machine like so. We've got a controller here. So the model number is Lotus SP short for special. Uh, you can actually uh, detach those if you want to. You can just push back on the spring loaded. Uh, this end down here has got a little spring loaded pin and they just pop out. Yeah, and this one spring loaded that way and then on this particular model you can push this little button here and remove that cover there to give you, um, you know, a, a free arm as such. I mean, it is raised up off the, um, off the bench there, so you could, you know, uh, call that a sort of a large free arm. Low profile, but quite uh, deep free arm. No power. Like there, put the uh, switch on the end here, which just um, in the zero position gives you just motor running but no drive. Okay, and then you've got two pos two other positions. We've got the uh, stitching position here, like that, and bobbin winding. And we've got a light switch here. So I'll just go through some of the other um, controls here. So on the right hand controller here we've got a stitch length uh, knob here. So 0 through to 4, the longest stitch length 4. And if you come back past 0 you end up in the reverse stitches. So you, you can leave that in permanent reverse. So there are quite a few similarities between this machine and the Year electronic. So I may refer um, you back to that video in this one uh, to save doubling up there. But um, just basically we've got a uh, full throw zigzag here for and you can um, narrow the zigzag by coming down towards zero. You've got a needle right position, needle left. That's the uh, tying stitches for the buttonhole. Then we've got um, the left and right bar for the button holing and the top and bottom bar for the buttonhole. And over here we've got the pattern stitches, so it's plain zigzag, a um, sort of a narrow zigzag with a every third stitch is a wide zigzag and a tricot stitch. And here we've got the uh, top thread tension You've got bobbin winder here, spool post there. Around the back we've got uh, presser foot lifter, bobbin extractor here, spring loaded. So this uh, little plastic clasp here comes down into the bobbin and um, just helps you extract the bobbin there, picks it up out of the bobbin case. So quite handy. 
sometimes you come across uh, these types of machines that have got these missing or broken you can actually get the bobbin out uh, just with you know fingernail or just a little screwdriver or something you'll notice a little uh, cut out here that's just to let the bobbin come up through here a little cut out here that's to uh, bring up the bobbin thread through this hole here so it doesn't trap when you close the door there's the mounting screw for the presser foot there little, um, this lever here that lever there just pulls down the bulb uh, so that it's accessible for changing so this machine here has got a uh, piece of broken plastic out of here but it doesn't affect the machine operation at all and so under here we have a little area for accessories and tools a cleaning brush there was a I don't have everything for this machine a little screwdriver would have gone in here uh, I think I do have one of those somewhere a bottle of oil a, a numb picker needle threader here a little posse for spare needles and bobbins and over here we've got posse for um, extra feet and the blanking plate that goes over the feed dogs which is missing from this machine but uh, uh, refer back to my previous video on the Elna TSP era electronic to see um, how that little cover plate works there's a wee guide here to pull up for the top threading and then you can just close the lid like so so we'll start with bobbin winding here Let's put a bobbin on. These are uh, specific Elna bobbins for these machines. Uh, as I've shown in previous videos of the Elnas, uh, dead giveaway is a solid one side of the bobbin and a uh, holes on the other. Generally, if you see those bobbins, more than likely they'll be Elna bobbins for this style of machine and earlier models. Just put that on there like so. We get some thread here and just come down to this eyelet here around the eyelet which is all, it also doubles as the um, thread guide for the top thread and come and wind around the bobbin several times let's go around half a dozen times and then we've we set, set the bobbin winding here should be set to go. There's no automatic cutoff on these ones, so you do have to um, monitor that. Needle threading, so you can leave the uh, thread through there. You come down from the eyelet here around the tension disc and pull up. So hold back on the thread at the top here just give it a, a, a tug here to pull the thread over this little guide and down in the uh, thread tensioner there with this little spring that needs to be over so that's all good there then bring up your take up to the top there and thread the thread around the take up from right to left then down through this guide here from left to right there's another guide on the needle there, one either side. You can choose either way, either which one, it doesn't matter. The needle needs to be inserted the correct way. So I've just undone the little uh, thumb screw there. And these particular models, you use a standard uh, domestic sewing machine needle. And the uh, flat on the shank goes to the rear of the machine so faces the rear just install that needle there being careful not to scrape it on anything make sure it's right up in the hole there until it hits the stopper and tighten the little knurled thumb screw there and then we just thread the needle front to back like so Okay, before we get sewing though, switch the switch here around to the sewing position. 
Now I've been through um, installing the bobbins in these Elners. Uh, there's quite a few different models that use a very similar um, hook and base system. Uh, so have a look at, uh, for, for very detailed uh, bobbin threading instructions, have a look at the previous video, the TSP here electronic. I've got the bobbin pulling off here, so holes to the top. Uh, and when you pull the bobbin it should turn anti-clockwise. Drop the bobbin in there, there's a little cut out, there's a little slit just there. You bring the thread, bring the thread into there and just pull it. There's another little ledge type piece just here thread comes in. Uh, but there is another, you have to click the thread under the little tensioner properly. As say, have a look at my previous video for detailed instructions on that. So yeah, basically in a nutshell, you just hold back on the bobbin to stop it from turning and you clip, you just push the thread down under the little fingers on the tensioner there. And then close the door here making sure not to trap the thread, there is a little cut out there and then pick up the bobbin thread, just one turn of the machine until the take up lever comes back up to the top ok, and we've got a bobbin thread there let's pull both of those threads so they go, top thread goes under the foot there, press foot and the bobbin thread's coming out through the hole in the plate there. So, so first thing I'm going to do is show you button holing. So to set up a button holing, you would set the um, stitch selector to zigzag. Come around to do the first bar. So this will be the long bar. And we set the stitch length to about half. It's something that needs to be judged. So we'll um, so you should really uh, sew on a piece of scrap material. Okay, so let's see how we go down that first bar. Oh, by the way, uh, we need to change the foot. This foot here is not appropriate for buttonholing. It doesn't have the uh, cutout at the back that it needs. This foot's the buttonholing foot. It's got the a cutout here and a couple of guides, guide slots here. through there, press the foot down, let's do a test sew here, it's going to be quite a long buttonhole this one, just for demonstration purposes, let's get that needle down, just flip that around to show you, yeah, so the Stitch length looks fine on that, it's pretty good. Okay, so I'll just, I'll just carry on a little bit further. Okay, and then you stop with the needle in the right hand throw of the zigzag there. Up and over to the right. Then you do a 180 degree turn of the fabric there and then bring the needle out of the work and then I'm going to switch the turn the switch here to the lower bar just a half dozen stitches five stitches or so and then set this back to the narrow bar again this is for the long bar going back up the other side Stop just before the end there, bring the needle out and then back onto the wide bar there for a few stitches and then it's probably a good idea to go around to this tying stitch here and that'll just do a few little tie 
between stitches there we have a buttonhole now I would probably be tempted to loosen the top tension a little bit it um, is one of those things that's a bit of trial and error depending on what sort of thread you're using and what materials you're using but yeah that's looking pretty good so I'll just give you a quick uh, demo of that and in, in sort of real time first bar bring the needle down on the right hand throw 180 with the fabric needle out wide bar needle out back to the narrow bar and wide bar again and tying stitches and there's the buttonhole done and there we have a nice little buttonhole so it does a very nice little buttonhole actually it's quite impressed with that now just a, a quick demo of standard sewing there I'll be doing some satin stitching here so I'll leave this foot on it's fine for doing that I'm leaving this here on zigzag in the meantime and bringing the stitch width up to 4 here stitch length will leave around about a half I'll do a close satin stitch I would have to say they're probably not the fastest machine around um, the little lotus so it's a uh, wide zigzag satin stitch let's just narrow it down to say uh, number two on the width and if we just have a wee look at the standard zigzag go up in the stitch length a little bit stitch length is about three uh, width is about is maximum there that's width four there and then the other stitches bring the stitch selector over to the next pattern stitch there and I'll bring the stitch length down to about two actually well, now I'm going further. One. Let's do tricot stitch here. This one here. Tricot stitch. So to set up for straight stitching, you can be on either of these pattern stitches. It doesn't matter. You have your uh, stitch width on zero here and stitch length on about three it's probably about right so to show you back tacking on this machine because it's a little bit different to a standard uh, machine you would sew your straight stitch stitches to start with so you know uh, maybe four or five stitches like so then you put the machine into reverse it's by turning this stitch length lever or knob back to about what you were matched here so I was about between two and three and these little dots refer to one two three and four so I want to be sort of between two and three there for the back tacking stitch one, two, to the start of the seam and then again back to your forward stitch just back up to about two and a half there for the forward stitching and away you go on your seam so because there's no um, actual dedicated back tacking reversing uh, lever or button you do have to manually turn the um, stitch length knob it's not too bad once you get used to it so I'll come down to the end of the seam here, go into reverse, 
and then back into forward again. Not quite as convenient as a spring-loaded uh, reversing, dedicated reversing button. Uh, that's so that's straight stitch. You've also got needle left. Uh, that's needle right. That one and needle left. This one here. We're on needle right there at the moment. I'll switch across the needle left. Back to centre there. So there's not really much more to show you as far as functionality goes on this machine. It's, it's fairly basic, um, but a very nice little compact, lightweight unit. Also, goes without saying, very well made in Switzerland. So, you know, as far as build quality goes, you, you can't go wrong. So you can't really get any better as far as build quality goes. They are very well built. As far as maintenance goes on these machines, they are uh, they're fairly reliable. There's not a lot that goes wrong. There's a drive pulley in behind here that can sometimes get a bit worn, but I hardly ever see that happen. Yeah, though, you know, they're not as easy to get into as some machines. The uh, you know the bobbin cover that just slides back here. Take the press foot off here. Fairly straightforward. Well, let's just take the needle out and the plate here just unclips. It's difficult to do from this angle. Just get your finger under it, pull it up. That just unclips like that, and uh, you know you can get down into here. Get your cleaning brush. Give that a bit of a clean there. There's an oil point down in here. Uh, there are other oil points all uh, through the machine, but they're not really user serviceable oiling points, really. I mean, you could, if you're handy with a screwdriver, take, take the bottom off and um, get in there and give that a clean oil. Be careful if you do go into this end here with oil. You don't want any oil going anywhere near the drive pulley. Uh, and there it drives, it run, the pulley runs, it's a little uh, idler pulley that runs between the motor pulley and the hand wheel here. So you definitely don't want oil there or anywhere near the electrics. You can get the um, lid off here just by removing four screws here. Comes uh, straight off. The base plate here is easily accessible, just one screw there. And yeah, that's that's about it. I think you know, as long as you keep them clean and and oiled, they should last for a, a very long time. I mean, this is I think uh, a 70s model, so you know um, they're still going strong today, and um, they've got plenty of life left in, in them if they're looked after. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that uh, video there on the cute little Lotus SP from Elna. Uh, yep, the ultimate portable, I would say. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a um, motorhome or you have a small apartment and uh, you just need a little machine for doing you know repairs, you could make clothing on this. I don't see a problem with that. No problem at all. Uh, so yeah. Uh, hope you enjoyed that video and thank you very much for watching.